Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Are you experiencing hot flashes, fatigue, mood swings, irregular periods? You might be heading toward menopause. Joining us to talk about menopause and perimenopause is Dr. Katrina Kelly. She's a gynecologist at Scripps Clinic in Rancho Bernardo, California. Dr. Kelly, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Susan, for having me. Sure. All right, well, let's start with the basics. What is perimenopause? Perimenopause is a frame of time which could even last 10 years before the menopause where women start noticing that their menstrual periods become somewhat irregular. They may become closer together for a while, every 21 days instead of the usual 28 days. And then eventually they may start missing periods where they have a period every one to three months. Eventually they stop having periods. And at what, what age do women start experiencing uh, perimenopause? It can be late 30s, early 40s. That's pretty, pretty typical. And then what is menopause? Menopause technically is no period for one year, 12 months. And what are the signs that you have gone into full menopause aside from the, the fact that you're no longer getting your periods? Symptoms can vary from woman to woman. Some women go through a smooth transition where that's the only thing that they notice. While it can be quite severe in other women, they may have hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, mood changes, as you mentioned before. Um, you know, they may notice vaginal dryness. They may be having pain with intercourse. They may have palpitations. There's a whole host of symptoms um, that women may have. So what are the long-term effects of this reduction, this big reduction in your hormones? Over the course of the 30 years that a woman may live beyond the menopause, let's say she goes through an average age of menopause of 51 and lives to an average age in the United States of 81, over the course of those 30 years, she may develop osteoporosis, which is a thinning and inflexibility of the bones, which can lead to fracture and disability, um, can lead to heart disease, stroke, and heart attacks and can lead to dementia. So what is hormone replacement therapy? The idea of hormone replacement therapy is to replace the hormones that a woman makes in her reproductive years, which are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And what are the benefits and risks of hormone replacement therapy? The benefits are that Hormone therapy can help protect the bones um, from osteoporosis. Um, it can also help protect, protect against heart disease and protect against dementia, all different types of dementia, including Alzheimer's. And what about the risks of hormone replacement therapy? Hormone therapy does, depending on the type you're using, carry a small increase in the risk of breast cancer. But if you look at um, the North American Menopausal Society's statement in 2017, they stated that they felt the benefits outweighed the risks in terms of hormone therapy. So let's say you don't want to do hormone replacement therapy. There is another option. It's called bioidentical hormone replacement. What is that? It's a product that's synthesized from plant sources, and it is synthesized to look like your natural hormones. So for example, your main estrogen that you make is estradiol. It's going to look like the chemical structure of your estradiol and be absorbed in a way that your natural estradiol would be into your system. So what are the benefits and risks of this bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? So the benefits are that um, bioidentical hormone therapy can help keep your bones strong, prevent osteoporosis, can prevent heart disease as well as prevent dementia, in addition to helping with quality of life issues and helping the vaginal and bladder tissues. Um, the risks that are considered are a slight increase in the risk of breast cancer. And the most important study that was done showed there was one more woman per thousand per year who developed breast cancer over not being on hormone therapy at all. And that was the Women's Health Initiative study. Why would someone choose um, the bioidentical hormone replacement versus the traditional hormone replacement therapy? 
bioidentical hormone therapy, because it looks like the hormones that your body produces, is going to bind to the receptors in your body the way it should. Therefore, women tend to feel better on it. Um, they also have, we, we believe there are less risks involved with bioidentical hormone therapy. So in addition to hormone replacement therapy, um, what kind of lifestyle changes can you employ to reduce your symptoms? In terms of hot flashes and night sweats, we know that women who weigh less tend to have less hot flashes and night sweats. So weight reduction can be helpful. Eating a healthy diet, avoiding alcohol, too much caffeine, too, too many um, sugar products can be helpful. Regular exercise can be helpful. Some products can be helpful in terms of tolerating the symptoms. For example, wearing breathable clothing at night when a lot of women are woken up by their night sweats, wearing a cool pad underneath your um, sheets on your mattress. Uh, there are pillows that are made now where you can um, have a coolness under your head. So if you're experiencing a night sweat, you sleep a little bit better. So those are some practical things that can be done. Um, some women get a little benefit out of over-the-counter um, supplements, that's non-prescription um, supplements, uh, whether it be soy products or black cohosh-based products, those can be helpful as well. And there are some other prescription medications that we give to women that are non-hormonal that can be helpful with some of the symptoms that women have. Any final thoughts, doctor? I think that whether you're a woman and you're going through your late 30s and starting to have symptoms or into your 50s or beyond, it's important to talk to your gynecologist about what you may be experiencing. And we can help you to figure out an individualized plan, whether it be hormone therapy or something else to help you through this transition. Dr. Kelly, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. You're welcome. Want more information about menopause and perimenopause? Just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.